Great to see everyone here. Uh, welcome, everyone. If you happen to be a visitor, uh, we we'll certainly welcome you. And it's a, a wonderful thing to be here and to see uh, all of our friends together. Uh, God blessed us with a lot of things, and one of the things He blessed us with was family and community uh, and the people in the church. And I'm just uh, glad to. Be here with you this morning and to know that uh, I have friends in this this room, a lot of friends. Thank you for coming.
Good morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we're so grateful for the day and this opportunity that we have to come together as a church family. God, we just pray your blessings upon all of our activities. And God, we're especially mindful during this holiday season. And we always tend to complain about how busy we are through the course of the year, but I think it gets magnified this time of year. And God, I just pray that you would help us to be able to just slow down, to be able to clear our thoughts and our minds, to be able to focus on you, especially this morning as we have this opportunity to come together and worship God. God, we're wanting to lift up those on our prayer list, especially be with Keith Huckabee and, and with Penny Emmerich and all those that are listed there. God, uh, you also know that each and every one of us in this auditorium have friends and acquaintances and folks that we know of that uh, are struggling with sickness or loss or loneliness. And God, we just lift all of this up to you because we know that you know each and every one of those situations. And God, we just pray that you use us where you can to be a light and be a hope and be an encouragement. And we just give that to you. God, we just pray for this worship service, that you help us to just sing songs of joy, that you help us to focus on the message. And once again, God, once again, God, we just pray most importantly that we can just slow down. We can clear our thoughts and our minds to be able to truly, truly focus on Jesus, on the message, and especially during this holiday season as we look forward to celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Children's Church, three to six years old, you are dismissed. You can go now. I love all that excitement. You know. Child is and is wounded to rest on Mary's lap, this sleeping, who angels greet with a thumb sweet, while shepherds watch for healing.
to do that, to switch between three different songs one after the other. We, I was still on Silent Night, and there was a whole new tune going, and I, I couldn't find it. I don't know how you do it. So, But thank you so much for leading. Um, that's why you're the one who leads singing, and I don't. So just so glad to have you. We normally reserve the announcements for the end, but there's a few things that I just want to make you aware of that I'm so excited about. I just can't wait any longer. And the, the first is Johnny and Lindy Bell are here with us, and we are so excited to have them. Uh, they're wonderful, wonderful friends. We live down the a street from Johnny and Layton and just love them so much. We, we miss you all. And y'all are here for a very special reason. Not just to see us, although we know that's that's really special, but um, Miss Lindy has uh, published a book and she's going to be out at the museum from two to four today for a, a book signing. And so we want to encourage you to all go out there and support her. I've not read the book, but she's told me a little bit about it and it sounds really intriguing. So we hope that you'll join us and, and thank you for coming and thank you, thank you for bringing your, your sweet mother. We love her so much. So. Uh, also, a few more things we want to remind you of. If you signed up to bake cookies uh, and bring them, we need 70 dozen cookies by this Wednesday. If you want to bring more, just put them in my office. Otherwise, uh, we just need them here on Wednesday. And one more thing, today is the day that we're collecting the funds for the New Mexico Christian Children's Home of Portales. And so if you have your red or green envelope, uh, you can place your donation in there and put it in the box or hand it to one of the elders. Uh, you can also go online and do that via PayPal. Uh, all the funds, 100%, will go to gift cards, which will be sent to the Me New Mexico Christian Children's Home. And so today is the day to do that, so we want to encourage you uh, to do that. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2 again, so if you have your Bibles, if you would join me, open up to Luke chapter 2. We're actually going to start in verse 6. And I'm going to do something that's very difficult for me to do. I'm going to start reading, and I'm not going to stop until we get to the end. I'm, I'm going to want to stop and comment, but we'll do that a little bit later on. So right now, we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 6. While they, that's Mary and Joseph, were there, there being Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men to whom, on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard, which they, which they had seen, which were just as had been told. So we actually read this last week, but today I want to focus in a little bit more on a different group of people. I want to focus in on the shepherds. 
And the one thing that I love thinking about is why did God choose to allow happen the things in, in the way in which he did? Why would God choose to have his son not only crucified, but why would he have him to be crucified between criminals, one on his right and one on his left? God chose that. He wanted it to happen that way. Why would God allow his son not to be born just of a virgin and, and somewhat of an illegitimate situation, but then that child to be placed uh, in a manger, in a, a feed trough, in a stable, because there was no room for him. But I don't think that it was only out of convenience that the shepherds were chosen because God said, well, we probably need somebody to hype up the, the birth of Jesus. And so we need somebody who can do a little PR. Who can we get? And they oh, we don't have anybody close. But there's some shepherds. They're nearby. Let's just grab them. And so my first question as we look at Luke chapter 2 is why would God choose them? I mean, what was special about them? A shepherd in the first century is kind of like a roustabout in the 21st century. What was so unique about them that God would say, these are, these are going to be the ones that are going to go out and be heralds. They're going to be the ones who, who send the good news about Jesus. I mean, I just, I want you to think about this. Think about if somebody famous were coming into town. Who would you want to be promoting their arrival? Can you imagine a bunch of guys in the, in the you know, the, the, the fire retardant coats and their jeans that are just caked with oil and their big boots and they're walking around saying, hey, guess what? The president's coming. Is that really what you would think? Like, guys, you know, clean up. I mean, let's. Why don't we get somebody in here who, you know, is probably is more suited for the task? But what if they were the ones that were suited for that task? What if that's exactly who God had chosen? Said these are the ones. And so my question is, what was special about them? I think there's a couple of things. I think the first is that they had willing hearts. And secondly, they had a desire to worship. Think about that. You think you have what it takes to be a worshiper of God? Do you think God would actually choose you out of seven billion people say, you're the one that's going to tell everybody about my son Jesus, the best news anyone can ever hear and I'm picking you would God pick you well let me ask this do you have a willing heart and do you have a desire to worship apparently that's exactly what these shepherds had because we have an angel that comes down. As we talked about last week, the angel absolutely terrified these shepherds. It says they, 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 they tremble. And that is worship. The shepherds worshiped right there in that field. Now you, you can go back and look. And you can challenge me on this one because it doesn't say that they worship. But I don't think it is a stretch to say that their worship began right there as the angel came to them. Because remember, what is the Greek word for worship me? Does anybody remember? What is it, young lady? Well, hallelujah is what they would have said. But what's the physical action? To kiss the hand? To, to bend the knee. And don't you think as that angel appeared to them and they were terrified that they fell to their knees, they were worshiping right there. There is no doubt 
that the terror elicited by the angel led them to bow down. They were willing to worship right where they were. Throughout the Bible, we are introduced to hundreds of worshipers and they worship in dozens of different places. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, today in class, we are going to have a, a battle of the sexes. Men against women, women against men. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to list different Bible characters in uh, that we find worshiping. And then the other sex has to has to say where that person was when they were worshiping. So don't you don't want to miss out, guys. We're going to need your help. OK, I've already found out Ida is going to be in class today. So we're in big trouble. OK, so guys, we need all of you here. OK, and so we're going to see if we can name some some individuals in the Bible and then the women have to come up with the places where they worship and vice versa. But all throughout the Bible, we find some really crazy places that people chose to worship. It didn't just happen in church buildings. In fact, right here in a, a pasture, in a field where, where people were shepherding the flock. They are led to worship. But back to the field and, and the shepherds. They were there to worship God. But they weren't content to stay there. They wanted to get a closer look at the cross. Verse 16 says, So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Now, what did exactly, what did that look like? Did, did, they, did they walk? Did they run? Did they do the, the, the speed walk while they're pumping? The, I don't really know. I want to know. I wish I could have been there to see. What were they talking about? I, I don't really know, but I know it wasn't a meander. It wasn't a stroll. It wasn't an amble, a mosey, a saunter, or even a sachet. And as my mom always threatened, they didn't dawdle. They made a beeline. They were headed towards Bethlehem and they were looking for what? A baby, a baby in a manger. Just a crazy idea. What, how are you going to know you found the cross? How do you know you found the king? Okay, look for a smelly feed trough and when there's a baby in it, then you know you're in the right place. <coughs> but I do have to ask this. I know it sounds silly, but I, I just want to know, why did they hurry? Think about it, why did they hurry? I mean, Bethlehem can't be that far away. I mean, it's a baby. It's not like the baby's going to get up and walk away. I mean, the baby is sleeping, and as we learned from the song last week, it didn't cry at all, right? Why were they in such a hurry? They, they were excited. They were anxious, just like all of you this morning. You woke up before the alarm went off and said, I can't wait. We're going to go worship today. Honey, get up. Oh, that's right. It's Sunday. We get to worship. I can't wait to go and learn more about Jesus and be surrounded by people who want to learn more about Jesus. We're going to get together and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be so great. It's going to be like, like the old time pep rallies in high school, right? Where people, yes. Yes, but we don't need pom-poms to be excited because this is not about a game that we might win. This is about a Savior that has won the world and has offered it to us. This, he's overcome the world. He says, don't be afraid. I'm giving you life. Aren't you really excited? Like, aren't you really excited? I think you are. You're not showing it, but I know deep down you are, right? You're excited that, that God has absolutely changed your life because without Jesus, you have no hope of salvation. And this is really good stuff. That's exactly why they would have hurried. Here they were. They were ready to go and worship this, this little baby, this, I, I don't know, six pound, eight ounce. I don't know. We don't know any of the numbers, but whatever it was, they looked at that child 
and they worship. But why? Why would they worship this baby? Because they knew he was the Savior. Because they knew he was, but what had he done? He's lying there. He hadn't done anything. He's just there. He's sleeping or not sleeping. He's crying or, or not crying. What has he done? Now, I just don't get it. Maybe, maybe they worship who they believed he was. Maybe they worship because they, they believe that he was going to do great things for the world. Or maybe they just worship the God who had sent him. But the fact is that they were so impressed by that meeting that they began to share it with other people. Verse 17 and 18 says, When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. This news was too good to contain. They just had to share. But the thing is, think about this, guys. There's really a lot at stake here. There's a lot at stake here. I mean, they're going to make some pretty bold claims about a little infant baby that they just saw. Let me tell you about this baby I saw laying in a barn in a food trough. He's going to change the world. Okay, now I know y'all think that that's crazy, but it's really not. Because all of you have been around grandparents who have done this, right? You've been around the grand. We have all been assaulted by the pictures. Back in the day, the pictures used to be in a billfold that you could pull out and you know, oh, this is. But now we have the phones, and the grandparents are armed with a device that, that we cannot like guard ourselves from. They pull out that phone and they will show you pictures. I like all these, just scroll after all these pictures of this little grandchild. And they will so, say some of the craziest things. You know, I've heard them gush. Oh, this child is so cute. And that baby isn't really that cute. Oh, this child is so smart. Like, wouldn't you give like an IQ test in the crib? Like, oh, but look how they smile so great. Oh, it's just gas. Come on, people. Like, they get so excited about their little child. Oh, oh, he's 22 inches long. He's going to be a great basketball player. Really? 20, you're you're going to say that. You're going to project that. Oh, look, she has such beautiful eyes. She's going to be a model. A model? The kid doesn't even have hair yet. Like, what are we talking about here? Oh, he has a huge head. He's going to be a rocket scientist. No, that kid just got a really big head. I hope it has strong neck muscles because it's going to need to hold that thing up. Or my favorite, oh, we had to wait for hours to see her. She's going to be a doctor someday. Because that's what doctors make. They make people. Yeah, I thought so. Regardless, there was something special about that baby laying in the manger. Because the shepherds just kept on worshiping. Listen to verse 20. The shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. When I grow up, I want to be just like those shepherds. I want to be that nobody in the field that God can look at and say, you know what? I believe that Doug will believe and that he's willing to worship and that he'll share the message of Jesus with other people. In a time when everybody wanted to be a scribe or a Pharisee, God said, I'm going to choose the smelly shepherd out in the field to share the good news. This is what we know about those shepherds. We know that the shepherds were available, that they believed the angel, 
that they worshiped in the field, that they hurried to see Jesus, that they spread the good news, and that they praised God for his son. Does that describe us? Are we available to God? Will we believe what God tells us through the Bible, His Word, and through the ways He speaks to our hearts? Are we willing to worship exactly where we are? Not just right now, but wherever we are this week, are we willing to worship God wherever we are? Will we hurry to have an encounter with Jesus? Are we going to spread the good news? And will we continue to praise God for his son, Jesus? This morning, my challenge, my call for each one of us is to be the shepherds that listen, that believe, that worship, that hurry, that spread the good news, and that we will praise God for his son, Jesus. This morning, I want to ask that you'll join me as we praise God in song. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, waiting for the strength. Angels with raptures announce it, shepherds with wonder to receive it. Sooner won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. Oh.
Could you guys give me just a little more light? Thank you. Grace is getting something we don't deserve. Mercy is not getting something we do deserve. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36. Then, G, excuse me, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here and wait while I go and pray over there. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. He began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. He said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Never, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. John 19, excuse me, John 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a hispus, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And by bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. When he said it was finished, he paid the debt that we owed for our sins. And he paid it in full. In a couple of weeks, we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But this morning, we're here at the communion table to remember the things that our Savior has done for us. Pray with me, please. Father God, we want to thank you for that love, the grace and the mercy that you have showed us through your son, Jesus. And as we partake of this bread, knowing that this was, represents his body, may we humble ourselves in front of you and your son. This we pray in your son's name, amen. with me please father again we come to you humbling ourselves as we partake of this cup which represents the blood your son shed for us to cleanse us of those sins that we have committed we thank you again for that grace and mercy that you have showed us. This we pray in your son's name. Amen. Let's pray for the offer. Father God, we want to thank you for our blessings. 
We've been blessed by you in so many ways, ways that we can't even count, ways we don't even remember. But Lord, take this offering that we offer to you this morning and may you bless it and continue to help bless this church. This we pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. some time and now Marty is in, also in bad health and she's his caregiver and so they're in, uh, having a hard time and so we'd like to remember them 
in our prayers. Also, uh, McCoy Curley is in the hospital. Uh, he's had an infection, and so uh, they're trying to help him get straightened out, and hopefully he'll be back home soon. So we need to keep McCoy in our prayers. Also, uh, there are some of you who probably remember the McFarlands uh, that used to be here. Uh, as I read this, uh, it's Barbara McFarland and Larry, and uh, apparently uh, Barbara passed away. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Barbara passed away uh, recently in, uh, in Abilene, and services will be held there for her today. Um, to bow with me, we'll have a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, you're an awesome God, and we're so thankful for all the wonderful blessings that you bring us. You brought us the whole notion and idea of family and community and friendship and this mutual support that we, we have and friends that we can lean on um, for our worldly needs. And, and we just thank you, Lord, for that. I ask you to remember uh, Marty and Leroy Merritt and their struggles. Please, Lord, remember McCoy, Curley, and, and Shirley as, as they go through another hard spell. And I ask you, God, to bless this congregation. I ask you, Lord, to go with us as we leave here today and to help us be examples of what God wants us to be as followers of Christ. And I ask you to be with us uh, through this holiday season as people uh, who are grieving, grieve more through these holidays whenever they miss their loved ones that have gone on. And, and God, we just ask you to, to comfort us and to give us a, a strong shoulder on which we can lean and and ask God to be with us and help us to be better Christians and, and better people as we go through our week. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You're dismissed and don't forget class. <laughs>